Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at expanding upon some code that we had written in a previous video. So in one of the previous videos, we started talking about event-driven programming and writing event handlers. Uh, so in that particular video, we wrote some code here for certain event handlers to be able to move, turn left, turn right, and spin. And we bound these particular functions here, these event handlers, to certain keys on the keyboard. So the space bar was mapped up to the move function or the move event handler. Uh, left arrow key was mapped up to turn left. Right arrow key was mapped up to turn right. And the S key was mapped up to this uh, spin event handler. So what we want to be able to do in this video is, as opposed to just tapping the space bar and being able to move two pixels at a time. So fundamentally what's happening there is whenever we hit the space bar and then release the space bar, it's moving our turtle forward uh, two pixels. What we'd like to have happen is that whenever we press and release the space bar, that our turtle just continues to move until we press and release the space bar again. So in order to be able to do that, we're going to have to introduce a couple of new concepts. So the two main concepts we're going to be looking at that's new to us is the while loop and also the scope of variables. And I probably won't go into a lot of detail dealing with the scope of variables. I plan to do another video where I discuss in more detail the scope and lifetime of variables. And I actually have another video uh, under my C++ section on the, uh, my channel where I talk about uh, scope and lifetime, but I plan on doing one for Python as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is go down to the interpreter and just do a quick review of the for loop and then introduce the concept of the while loop. So if you remember, the for loop is what we call a definite loop structure. And what this means is we know exactly how many times we want to do something, and we know that in advance. So we could say something like this. We could say for i in range, open print for, and then colon, and then specify some statement or set of statements. So we may want to say print turtle. And if we were to hit enter a couple of times, we can see that we print out turtle four times whenever we execute this for loop. So again, the for loop is designed for definite or counter-controlled repetition where we know exactly how many times we want to do something. So in contrast to the for loop, the while loop is designed for when we don't know how many times we want to do something in advance. So a while loop is what we call an indefinite loop as opposed to a definite loop like the for loop, uh, meaning that we'll loop or iterate until some condition is met. So let's take a look at the syntax for the while loop. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to create a variable i and assign the value of 0 to it. And then the while loop looks like this, or the while loop structure looks like this. We say while and then space, and then we specify some Boolean expression. And I'll keep mine very simple. We'll say as, as long as i is less than 5, colon, then maybe we print out uh, turtle, just like we did before. And the next thing we need to do below that is increment the value of i. So whenever we were looking at the for loop, it takes care of actually incrementing uh, this value of i for us. But down here with the while loop, that's not the case. So we got to say i assignment statement i plus 1. So this i is what we call our, our loop counter, and it's being incremented each time we go through the loop. So what happens is we say, while i is less than 5, print out the value of turtle. So we print out the value of turtle, and then we increment the value of i. So i is initially 0. Here we'd increment it to 1, and then we'd say is 1 less than 5 and then we'd print out turtle. So you can see that we keep going through this. So in this particular case, we'd end up printing out turtle five times because we started at, uh, we start i at the value of zero. And whenever we get to four, four would be less than five. We print out turtle, then increment the value of i again. And now we'd have as five less than five and we wouldn't do this anymore. So on the fifth time through, which would be the value of four, we get uh, turtle being printed out for the last time. So Again, the syntax for the while loop is just while, and then we must specify some particular Boolean expression. So here, after the while and before the colon, we have uh, some sort of Boolean expression that resolves down to a true-false value that, that's required. If we don't have that, you'll have a syntax error related to your while loop. So that's pretty much it. Let's see if this actually works. So I'm going to hit Enter a couple of times, and we can see that turtle gets printed out five times in this case. And this is very much a contrived example. We certainly could have done the same thing using a for loop, and most people would have used a for loop as opposed to the while loop. Uh, one thing that you have to be careful of when writing a while loop is to make sure you are incrementing or possibly decrementing 
your loop counter. Otherwise, you may end up with what's called an infinite loop where you just keep on doing the same thing. I should also say that infinite loops are not always bad. Sometimes we want to have an infinite loop. It really depends on uh, what type of program and what we're trying to achieve with the looping structure. So let's go back uh, up here to our code that we had written before and think about how we could maybe use a while loop. So what we want to be able to do is whenever we press the space, we want to continue moving. So you can think about, well, maybe we could say while some particular condition is true, that we want to move forward. So we can think about this uh, move forward here being the statement that we want to execute. And certainly we could say while true, and if we were to say while true, we would end up just moving continuously. Let's see what happens here. We, we probably know that this isn't right, but uh, let me see what happens when we run this code here now. So we have our turtle, and if we press the space bar, you can see that our turtle moves, and if we press the space bar again, our turtle is not stopping. So if I close out of this, you can see that we get all sorts of error messages here associated with um, stopping the program and it not being able to handle uh, what we were doing. So this is not really the solution. We need to have some condition here because what we're saying now is while this is true, which is always going to be true if we put in the Boolean variable true, that we'll keep moving forward. So us pressing, this, pressing and releasing the space bar is not doing anything. So I'm going to use a variable called go, and what we want to do is be able to toggle that variable back and forth. So we want to be able to say uh, go assignment statement and maybe not go. So each time that this particular uh, event handler, this function here called move is called, we will just change the value of go. So if go t uh, ends up being true, this would be not true. If it ends up being false, we would say uh, not false, which would be true. So we can just toggle that value back and forth. Now, if we were to try to run this code the way it is now, the problem is, is that Go doesn't have an initial value. So if we were to uh, try to run this code now, let me try to run this, and you'll see that here on the uh, console that we've got an error message that says local variable Go reference before assignment. So we try to make use of a variable here before we actually assign a value to it. So it doesn't know how to handle that. It doesn't give us a, a default value. So you may think, well, okay, since Go is probably a, a Boolean variable, we can just assign the value of maybe false to it. So if it's false, we could say not Go, which would be saying not false, which would be true, assigned to Go, and then we would say uh, while true, do this operation. And then the next time we call it, well, you can see that there's already a problem with that because if we say uh, assign false to it again, every single time we would end up with the same value being specified there. So it looks like this is not the answer either. What we need to be able to do is assign this value of false to go outside of the move uh, event handler, or the move function. So we need to be able to do something like that. So this looks like it may do what we want it to do. Uh, so let's try to run this code. I think that there's still some problems, but uh, I just want you guys to see what the problem may be. So let's go ahead and run this, and if we hit the space bar, you can see that it gives us a local variable go reference before assignment. So even though we created this particular variable go here and assigned the value of false to it, it turns out that this go here is a different go uh, than the one we have out here, and that's why it's saying that uh, we tried to reference a particular variable before assignment. So this particular go doesn't actually have a value. In order for us to make use of this go here, we have to specify that we're referring to that particular variable there. And this is what we call a global variable. So if I move my mouse over, you can see that it says global variable. In general, global variables are something that we don't want to use unless there's really no other uh, mechanism that makes sense for us to use or no other type of variable to, to make use of. Certainly there's a different way and a better way that we could write this. Uh, but I think for this particular programming example, it's perfectly okay to write a global variable. But again, you should be very careful whenever you use global variables. One of the big problems with using global variables is that we don't have any control over how this thing may be modified. Any particular method that we write, any function that we write, whatever you want to call it, could have access to that thing and can manipulate it within any function. And that's, that could be a potential problem. So in order to refer to this particular variable go, what we need to do is make use of the keyword global 
and then specify go. And that's indicating that this go is referring to that go there. So what's going to happen is each time we call this, this particular function here, this callback function or this event handler move, it's going to say, oh, okay, we're referring to this global variable called go, which has the value of false. And what we're going to do is change it to not go, not false, which would be true, assign that to go, and then that would be true. And then the next time we call this, it already has a value, and we'll just toggle that value. So this time around, it would be not true, since the value of go uh, the previous time around would have the value of true. Uh, this time we would say not true and assign the value of false, and then that we would say while false, and then not do this particular operation. So this should achieve what we're wanting to do in terms of being able to press and release the space bar and have our turtle move, and then press and release the space bar again and have the turtle stop. And I'll probably come back and talk a little bit more about this idea of global variables in just a bit. So uh, let's go ahead and run this code and see what happens. Okay, so we have our turtle here, and what I'm going to do is just press the space bar, and then I may make use of my arrow keys. So I should be able to move my turtle left and right using my left arrow key and right arrow key while the turtle is moving. So I'm going to press the space bar, left arrow key, left arrow key, left arrow key, and he's still moving. And then if I press the space bar again, you can see that the turtle is now stopped. So now we have the ability to really drive the turtle around uh, just by using our arrow keys. And if we want the turtle to stop, we can just press the space bar again. So this definitely adds you know, uh, a little bit more excitement to our little turtle program that we've been working with here. We don't have to continue pressing the space bar now in order to have our turtle move some particular distance. Now our turtle can just move automatically and we just use our arrow keys and if we want to stop we just press the space bar again. So let me go back real quick and just go back over some of these concepts. I didn't talk a whole lot about this idea of the scope of variables. Or I didn't even mention the, the scope of variables previously. But the scope of a variable is just simply where we can actually reference that particular variable. So in the case of Go here, it was a global variable. And we could reference this throughout any of these functions or throughout the whole entire program. So we didn't have a problem referencing Go here within this particular move function as long as we use this keyword global. Uh, this is very different than, say, this variable i down here inside of the spin function. So i is what we call a local variable. And a local variable only exists and can only be referenced within the particular function it was declared in. So i here uh, can only be referenced inside of the spin function. So we could say something like uh, print i. And this would be the value of i after we completed executing this uh, instruction here four times. So this for loop here executes this instruction four times. And then whenever it drops out, i should have the value of 3. So the very last time, it starts at 0. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3. So i would have the value of 3. So if we run this, you should be able to see this every time we hit the uh, S key for doing a spin operation. So I'll press the S key. And you can see here on the console that we have the value of 3. So I could do that again. And we get another 3 printed out. But if I was to take that print statement and try to do the print statement outside of that particular function, i no longer has a value associated with it. We haven't assigned a value because this i here is not that i because that i there goes out of scope and it also no longer has life. It no longer exists in memory once we complete this particular function. So i only comes into existence whenever we get to this particular for loop inside of the spin and goes out of existence as soon as we complete that spin function. So if I was to run this here, you can see that I get an error uh, straight away. So it says name i is not defined in relationship to this print i. So that's really the big idea whenever we're talking about the, the scope of a particular variable is just simply saying where can this variable be referenced. If we're looking at local variables, they can only be uh, referenced within that particular function or uh, block of code that we've defined, whereas the global variables, they can be referenced throughout the whole entire program. But they're very dangerous because uh, they can be referenced throughout the whole entire program. And anyone or any particular function could modify that global variable. So you need to be very careful using global variables. And maybe I'll come back and show you a different way to do the same functionality without making use of a global variable. But that will uh, require us to learn a little bit more. So that's pretty much it for this video. And we'll do some more stuff in the next video.